friends, it's nice to be back. As some of you know, I've been sick last week, very sick, but I'm all better now. And I've got a great news for you. I'm currently working on a new training DVD, which is going to be a part of the Making It Look Great series that you can find on makingitlookgreat.com. Uh, here's the website. Uh, so far there are four editions and in fact the fourth one is still being uh, being made and as you can see we're definitely on fire because the fourth version is not yet finished and we're already working on the fifth one which is going to be uh, and it's going to be my honor to host that session so uh, I'd like to thank uh, John Dickinson for giving me this opportunity so thanks John and uh, let's get back to the tutorial and what we're going to do today are muzzle flashes yes muzzle flashes the never never dying subject of of doing uh, you know low low budget action movies uh, so uh, actually this tutorial is going to be uh, divided into two parts the first part is going to be a review of a new plugin uh, by FX home called muzzle plug and uh, some of you, if you have been looking in how to make muzzle flashes, I'm sure you've came across FX Home website with all this, uh, with all this software, Composite Lab Pro, FX Lab Pro, and so on and so forth, uh, because they had this great mechanism to doing muzzle flashes. Uh, actually, a 3D muzzle flashes that, that you can rotate, uh, you know, to align to to any footage, uh, basically. So. And I was inspired by that like six months ago when I was doing some muzzle flashes. And I created an engine in After Effects to do muzzle flashes as well as and as well as in 3D. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, we're going to take a look at the muzzle plug itself. Uh, so let's just uh, get right to it. Uh, let's apply muzzle plug. And there's actually no learning curve. You just instantly know how to do it. So you've got those two gizmos in here. Uh, which allow you to rotate the muzzle uh, the way you like so we can align it with the footage and we can definitely see that this one is way too big right so what can we do to fix that well just look at the properties general textures blah 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 oh yes transform let's take a look at the transform and here we've got the scale parameter it's that easy so um, let's just align it up a little bit better and yeah, all ready to go, ready to shoot some aliens or something. Um, so the next step is obviously to keyframe uh, the position of this muzzle. So we can do it, you know, like manually or maybe uh, let's just try tracking the footage. Uh, let's turn this off for now and maybe let's track. Um, and I think we're going to need the tracking data later on anyway because I'm planning to show you a few uh, tips and tricks on rotoscoping as well. So. Uh, I think we can just track the footage and uh, speaking of rotoscoping I think I'm going to do a full length tutorial about how do I do rotoscoping even though I don't feel uh, you know uh, very expert and in, in this area uh, because rotoscoping is an art really you can be a specialist in rotoscoping and do nothing else um, but since all of us need to do some rotoscoping from time to time I'll share some tips and techniques that I use uh, while doing rotoscoping, but don't take them for granted. I'm, you know, I'm not doing it very often. Um, okay, so I think I'll track his hand uh, because, as far as I remember, everything else moves out of the frame. Yeah, his hand is going to be just right. Uh, we would probably need to take like two, um, two tracking points to calculate the angle. Maybe we should try to do that. Or maybe not. Uh, hard to say, really. Well, we may try, right? So let's just try that. Uh, we want to track what position, and we want to track rotation as well. Why can't I select rotation uh, for the transform? Let's just try it again. Track motion. Um, Oh yeah, because I got the position set. Uh, that's kind of cool. Let's just delete the motion trackers. Uh, my bad, sorry guys. And let's get rid of the muzzled flag for now. So we'll get to the review in a few seconds. Uh, let's just track this area. Like so. 
and rotation and let's track uh, maybe his hand as we planned so like this okay guys so I'm going to pause the recording for the time I will be tracking this um, and I'll get right back to you okay guys so I'm back with a uh, pretty solid track which is surprising considering this amount of motion blur and everything and um, can I just close this down for a second save the project uh -huh. like this and um, yeah let's create a new null object to keep the tracking data so td gone 01 um, yeah let's just apply the tracking data to our null object that's right apply x and y that's okay and yeah that's it let's just close this palette for now and let's see how it works well, it sticks pretty well okay uh, so what do we do with this uh, now let's apply our muzzle plug and here we have it and there's actually uh, no learning curve just like I said we can just you know uh, rotate this on this axis on this axis uh, scale it down I'll just walk you through the parameters but right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, take the position parameter and put it uh, the tracking data and put it to the position and also I think that we might try to uh, even offset this rotation value by the tracking data which is going to be pretty cool I think uh, so let's just alt click here and alt click here and let's create our expressions and the muzzle plug position should be exactly the position of our tracking data I think maybe it will move or offset a little bit oh no it's 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 uh, quite okay so like this and our rotation I think that our rotation needs to be uh, what it is at this point uh, hmm. no not exactly because we need to offset it by this number so how can we do it um, well we could do it by an expression but if we select all the keyframes and just simply hold control uh, sorry alt I think or maybe something like that no control yeah and we just move this to be equal to zero all the keyframes are going to update uh, uh, you know respectively or whatever the word is um, so right now we can take this value so whatever it is value and add our rotation value so basically we're having this rotation value offset it by this rotation I think this will work haven't tried it yet uh, so let's see and let's see if it works the only thing that might not work is that it's probably maybe going the wrong direction <laughs> yeah that's right it's going the wrong direction so we're not going to add we're going to subtract uh, so let's just do that right now um, all the tracking data are here we don't want them so value we want to subtract and that should be fine yeah more or less it's a little bit jiggly um, but that's just because of the tracking data are not so smooth as they should be but on the other hand we're not going to see the muzzle flash all the way through right we just want it to be in place where the gun is fired so I guess we're good to go and let's just take a brief look uh, through the settings okay so first of all we've got the general the general settings are the most general settings that you can get so you've got the color set it to yellow uh, green sorry and it's going to have a green tint obviously we've got color randomizer so uh, on each frame this color may be randomized just a little bit so uh, it's getting this other tints right now uh, so this is it what else we've got uh, a random seed every particle generator and basically every kind of uh, 
a random numbers generator should have a seed um, parameter. What this is, it's basically taking some settings driven by the random values and if you like the settings but you don't like the values that have been you know randomized you can just change the seed without changing other settings and it will still behave the same but the actual result will be different sorry somebody's calling me uh, I'll just pick up and be right back with you guys okay guys so uh, where were we I think I was talking about the random seed right Take a look how the muzzle flash changes when I change the random seed. It's still the same muzzle flash, but it looks a little bit differently, right? So uh, that's it. And we've got the rate of fire, which goes from 1 to 100. This is basically a uh, probability equation. If you've got set it to 100, then it means you've got a 100 to 100 chance that the muzzle flash is going to be visible. If you set it to 50, then it means you've got a 50% chance that the muzzle flash is going to be visible so you know and so on and so forth uh, I found that values around 30 or you know 30 and 50 work best because you don't want to see a muzzle flash visible you know like uh, on every bullet that is being shot the, the, from the gun so uh, you want it to be randomized so let's just see how it looks right now not bad right but we can definitely do uh, something to it and I think that we can randomize the seed. We can set say that we want this to be random. Uh, what, 200, uh, 2000 maybe? And this way it will be different on each frame. You can see how it moves, right? I hope you can see this. Uh, you know, this, this is screen recording, so you might not catch up with all the changes that are happening here. So I'll just go slowly frame by frame as you can see the muzzle flash changes uh, let's just change it back to the original color which was orangey or red something like that and let's go down to the second section the second section is textures and this is actually what makes our muzzle flash uh, the way it looks so uh, the default settings are you know some textures that are provided with the muzzle plug so that's pretty awesome that's pretty cool so we can get rid of all the textures so right now we don't see anything but we can import whatever textures we like let's take uh, those five for example and see what the result is going to be right so we can basically create our all muzzle flashes and uh, you know shape them the way we like uh, it's it's actually a little bit hard to understand how exactly uh, they are being made because you know we don't really know which parts are being used to uh, create which elements of the muzzle flash but I guess that's something that we just have to live with uh, let's just try using only one energy blob for example well that's a big blob right there um, okay so I think we can uh, create from photon I found that they're working very well uh, okay let's move forward we've already talked about the rotation transition uh, you know with the transform uh, section we've got position scale all the basic settings that you would expect to be here so we can close this one and those two are exactly what is the most interesting part for you we've got core ejection so this is uh, this little uh, muzzle in here and you've got side ejection so let's just turn off the side ejections and let's focus on the core ejection of course we can set it uh, to be rendered or not and this is actually a very very thoughtful feature uh, if you know if you've watched muzzle flashes like in slow motion or something you will notice that they appear a little bit far away from the barrel itself uh, and obviously our tracking point sits right in the middle of the barrel so we wanna move it away just slightly and we can do it using this slider in here so I just move it away like uh, 15 pixels or something and the other settings are pretty obvious we've got length and we've got height and you can see how the randomized color takes effect right we've got all the different colors in here uh, and those two settings are actually what make it uh, look like a muzzle flash we've got tapering so if you take a look what happens when I change this parameter 
it actually thickens uh, thickens the muzzle flash in specific areas. I, th I think we want to do something like this. And of course we've got topper height, so we can create something like that. And there's also jitter and intensity. Jitter is basically spreading the particles that are made uh, of these textures. Uh, it spreads the particles that create the muzzle itself. So if I pump it up really high, you're going to see a whole cloud of particles that make up the, uh, the muzzle. And as you can see, we've got those different cores that we set it up in general section. Color randomized. If I set it back to zero, we're going to have all the same colors in here. So let's leave it at 50 maybe. And of course intensity. This is basically a, uh, something like opacity or maybe it is opacity in fact. Hard to say. Um, okay, so once you know how the core uh, ejection works, you will instantly know how the side ejection works. We've got only a few additional parameters to the side ejection. Uh, first of all, we've got the number of sides, of side ejections, and this number actually uh, is taking a 360 degrees, uh, you know, like circle, and when you put a 3 in it, it divides it into 3 sections, and uh, you've got a side muzzle flash, a side ejection on those uh, on those places so we can set it to 5 this is actually something that we are used to see in uh, in action movies I guess and we've also got this barrel gap so we can spread them out or make them really really close um, all the same parameters length height tapper and you know all the things that you would expect all the things from the core ejection as well the additional parameter is also barrel rotation. So you can rotate it and even animate it to make the look a little bit different on each frame. And also we've got the barrel angle, which is obviously the angle at which uh, the side ejections are positioned um, in relation to the core ejection. So uh, that's, actually, that's actually pretty cool. We can set it up like that. Uh, or like that, you know, whatever you like. And there's also a glow. And even though uh, the glow is here, it doesn't actually do what I would expect it to do. Um, as you can see, we've got this little highlight in here that looks like a circle, like a white uh, semi-transparent cir circle. If I turn it off, uh, you'll see what I mean exactly. And I would rather expect this glow to affect the footage around the muzzle and I mean the footage pixels because it obviously affects the footage by drawing a circle and blending it in the screen mode as you can see in here or add but it still doesn't do uh, the thing that I would expect it to do uh, it's gradient based so we can set the color to whatever we like we can create a gradient uh, this maybe saves this whole section of this uh, of this plugin that we can actually create a gradient to match it up with the footage a little bit better and make it you know bigger and blend it, blend it in a different mode set the brightness and stuff like that but it still looks like a circle so I don't really like it and I feel a little bit disappointed but, but still still I really think it's you know the ability of moving this in 3D is really 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 something cool um, and of course the render. We've got some final render settings. We can uh, composite it on the original or just uh, have it on a transparent background like so. And we've got the blending most normal, add screen, pretty obvious stuff. And we've got the blur of course so we can blur it out just a little bit as you can see like a radial CC radial fast blur or something like that. It behaves uh, very similar. And one more thing in the glow I forgot to mention. If you turn it on, it's obviously, you know, uh, too much. But just to just to show you what this does, we've got grain frequency and grain strength, and we can pump it up like so, and it basically adds this uh, ray-like effect to the whole glow. Um, this might be useful, in fact, but still. Uh, the fact that the glow effect doesn't really 
suit me, I, I'm sure I'm never going to use this, uh, this particular section. But the other ones are pretty cool. And Okay, so that's the brief overview. And here comes the best part. The best part about it is, uh, I'll just maybe copy those two things, copy expression only, like that. Uh, the best part about muzzle plug is that it comes with a load of presets, loads and loads of presets, only for CS3 unfortunately, so if you are a CS2 user, sorry guys, uh, but let's just apply one of the presets, uh, like so, we can of course match it up a little bit better, like so, rotate it, and we can then apply our expressions like so and just have it shoot like that and we've got you know all sorts of uh, presets easily o over over 50 presets I guess haven't counted them though but uh, looks like it uh, so basically, this is if you're doing a lot of a lot of action footage, this is something that you should definitely try. Um, and uh, I don't know if I already mentioned that, but I was actually inspired by this uh, way of creating muzzle flashes. And back in the day when I was doing a lot of them, uh, I created a a method to create 3D muzzle flashes in After Effects. Unfortunately, it also uses some third-party plugins, but I guess if you're doing some motion graphics and some special effects in After Effects, you probably already own those plugins. And those are, of course, trap code plugins. And I'm talking specifically about Shine, and this is something that you might not expect, 3D Stroke. So let's just uh, get right to it and build our own 3D model flash generator. So uh, the first step is to uh, we actually need to create a new comp and this comp is going to hold our muzzle flash that we're then going to apply to the footage and it's even though it's not going to have all those cool gizmos that uh, muzzle plug gives us uh, we'll still have the ability to uh, rotate the muzzle on the, you know in 3D space and basically match it up with the footage the way we like so let's just uh, get right to it uh, I'm going to use a square comp uh, a bit larger than everything else so 800 by 800 should do just fine and square pixels that's right 25 frames per second and the reason I'm using a square comp is that I'm going to use a grid and of course snap to grid as well and that way uh, I have everything right in the center as you can see this is pretty crucial for this project um, so let's just start doing our muzzle flash let's create a new solid black and we're going to draw a mask like so that's our first mask and actually the only one that we're going to need because we're going to duplicate it several times this is going to be our core so let's just call this core and let's duplicate it and call this side one and we just take the navigation tool and just create something like this and then just duplicate it Oh, sorry, I named it the wrong one. So this one is side one, and this one is core. So let's just duplicate side one to create side two, and just drag it in here. Duplicate it again, drag it in here, duplicate it again, and drag it in here. And believe it or not, this is our base for doing the muzzle flash. Um, let's call this muzzle mask because this is not going to be uh, our muzzle flash itself. It's going to be our mat that is going to drive the opacity of the actual muzzle. So uh, now I guess uh, that you see why are we going to use 3D stroke 
um, in this project. So let's just apply 3D stroke. That's right, we can turn off the masks for now. And the first thing is, let's call this core. And we're going to set the path to core, obviously. And let's create a camera so we know what we're doing. And camera, okay, whatever the settings, doesn't really matter at this point. And let me just think for a second. Oh yeah, this muzzle, uh, this core needs to go directly into the camera. So we need to go to the transform settings and rotate it along the X-plane. So like this, and we need to set it to 90 degrees. That's good. And I think that we can set, set the color to gray. I'm, I'm, um, I'm doing this, uh, you know, uh, I didn't. I, I I did this a long time ago, so I really need to think this through. It's a bit of an improvisation uh, side one, and this doesn't need to be rotated. And we need to select the side one path, and also we need to set the blending mode to add. Okay, yeah, we're getting somewhere. Uh, so like this, and we also need to bend it. Let's bend it up like so and let's just see in which direction it's going. I think it's going to the wrong direction. Oh, sorry. We need to set the camera to use the comp camera. I need to remember that because we're going to duplicate a lot of those uh, 3D strokes. So let's just set it up correctly once and then just use the same data. Okay, now we can see that it's going in the right, wrong direction, so I guess we need to rotate it and we need to rotate it on the what? The y-axis, I guess. 180? Yes, that's true. And Now it's going into the right direction. That's cool. And let's just duplicate it again. Side 2, so let's choose side 2. Duplicate it again, Control D and side 3, and duplicate it again and side 4. So right now we've got something like this, and see why we did set the blending mode and the color to gray and blending mode to add, because in the places that they intersect it's more intense, and we're going to use the luma, uh, the luma value of this layer to drive the opacity of the actual muzzle. So um, I think that we can play a little bit with the tapering, just like in muzzle plug. Uh, so let's just take the core. I think we can increase the thickness just a little bit in the core. And where's the tapper? Here's the tapper. Enable tapering. And I want to move this. in here, so it goes like this, start thickness, end thickness, I think that's okay, okay, yeah, okay, something like this, maybe we can make it a little bit thicker, oh yeah, that looks better. Uh, hmm. And let's play with the settings of the other tapper, of the other uh, the side ejections. So tappering, and let's just rotate so we can see what we're doing. That's actually not bad. Maybe we can move it, you know, to this end somehow. Uh, okay, here's the star. Okay, yeah, that's right. Like this and like this. Okay, so 72 and 75. So let's apply those settings to the other. 72, 75. That's right. 
and to this one I should have been setting that you know at the beginning 72 75 and the last one 72 75 I get a feeling that this is going to be a long tutorial but you know it's up to you to uh, say it's if it's worth it or not um, and okay so here we have it this is our muzzle flash uh, shape but it doesn't look much like a muzzle flash yet so what we can do to make it look better uh, well actually there's a bunch of things we can do we can try to roughen the edges which is always a great idea in those cases and let's just set the border to what like 20 uh, oh yeah sharpness to 5 mm -hmm. fractal influence scale what do we have here complexity okay okay um, maybe we can decrease the border to 10 or something like that it really depends on how big the whole thing is maybe we can just take the paths and make it a little bit bigger let's just uh, select all the masks and just scale them up we can move the anchor point here and that way we got it a little bit bigger that's cool right right okay whoa that's a way too big um sorry maybe let's just scale it down just a little bit okay that's better so uh, here we have it and what else I think that a little bit of CC radial fast blur will do just fine CC radial fast blur in the standard mode 50 pixels yeah I guess that's it and we also can set the evolution of the uh, roughen edges because as you can see this makes this move just a little bit and this is exactly what we need uh, but I guess it's a good idea to save the project at this point and maybe let's change the scale or maybe scale it up no 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 scale it down definitely scale it down and increase the border maybe just a little bit okay uh, you can adjust those settings to you know to your own wishes uh, so let's set the evolution to be random random what whatever 2000 some of you might think that 360 will do but uh, not exactly because uh, there's a chance that you will see uh, two identical muzzle flashes I know it's hard to spot but I just like to do the things the right way so I guess this is the right way uh, to do it so let's just do a quick RAM preview and see how this muzzle flash looks like it's not bad actually as you can see it's evolving and it's moving and that's that's good and let's just try to rotate it we can see oh yeah it's heating up very very cool very cool okay so the next step is actually to create um, the muzzle itself right because this is the mask and we want to create the muzzle itself so let's just create a new solid a new black solid or whatever really now let's move it here let's call it muzzle texture and we start by applying fractal noise our good friend fractal noise and oh yeah we can turn off the grid right now because it gets in the way uh, show grid okay and first of all we need to set the type to dynamic or dynamic progressive whatever because it, is, it looks more smoky like so I guess that's good and we need to increase the contrast just a little bit and then just decrease the brightness also just a little bit something like that should do just fine 
and of course we need to play with the evolution as well so let's just apply the same expression random uh, 2000 or 3000 whatever you like so this is different on each frame right totally totally different on each frame and that's good the other thing that we need to do is we need to apply the circle effect and why is that because we want to heat up the center of the muzzle so we're going to do it with the circle effect blending with the additive mode so like this and feather it out looks pretty cool hey so this is this is how it's going to uh, be so let's maybe let's just decrease the radius just a little bit maybe like this and also decrease the feathering maybe it's a little bit too small okay let's just leave it as it is we can always uh, readjust those settings and the next thing is colorama whoa this definitely doesn't look like a muzzle flash but we're going to fix that and um, we're going to use the output cycle of uh, fire I guess fire should do just fine right and it does but I think we've got way too much colors and uh, uh, I think that we want to have more darks dark colors in here so let's just get rid of those intermediate colors like this one let's get rid of this one sorry guys I don't it's nothing personal really let's just do it like this and maybe let's put some black in here so it goes dark way way uh, you know before everything else and you can get rid of this one and this one and we can heat it up right about here I guess right about here should be just fine okay so we've got this and the next step is to what uh, let's just see how it looks right now okay so let's take the Luma and doesn't look very exciting but don't worry it's going to be fixed pretty soon and I think that we can use some uh, CC radial fast blur as well on the texture um, let's just take a look at the texture itself yeah that's a little bit better uh, but I think it's a little bit too much maybe let's set it to 20 or something like that okay okay it's actually not that bad and the last thing to do is to create an adjustment layer and I believe that we are lucky enough because I think that I saw let me just try it muzzle 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 adjustment yes this is it I think let's put it in okay okay not bad uh, let's just see what this one consists of we've got uh, glow apparently right so we've got this uh, nice nice glowing going on in here we've got radial fast blur to blur it out just a little bit more uh, we've got tint and why do we use tint this actually looks pretty good well maybe it's a little bit too hot so yeah tint tint is uh, is not a bad idea and then we've got shine to colorize it a little bit more and to add some you know extra boost uh, extra light boost in here so yeah that actually looks good uh, let's just see how it works out throughout the shot not bad not bad let's just rotate it I think I will spend a little bit more time uh, to provide the project file for you guys uh, because I know this this can look uh, much better than it does at this point uh, but just for the sake of the length of this tutorial which is already too long <coughs> sorry um, we're going to stick with this um, let's just take a look at the footage what do we have here well the guy is shooting uh, to the left and we should see the muzzle from the side right so uh, let's call this muzzle 
basic uh, and we can duplicate this one and we, you would always want to do that if you want to create a separate muzzle you always want to duplicate the original so this is muzzle side to left and we just drag this in just like that and we definitely see that it's going in the wrong direction, so we just open it up. Uh, reset the camera, just to be sure. And we just rotate it. Just like that. And I think this angle is just fine. Um, so let's just leave it as it is. And here you go. So let's just position it like this rotate it just a little bit I guess this guy is shooting some small aliens he's definitely aiming at the floor so okay like this we can also scale it down just a little bit and the cool thing about this is that the muzzle flash actually sits in the anchor point so whatever you do with it it's always sticking to this point so you can if you're doing a manual uh, keyframes for example without using the tracking data you can just turn the opacity down so go to the uh, opacity take it down and then just animate throughout the shot you know just moving the layer and such so uh, this is this is good uh, but we don't need to do that actually because we have a nice tracking data okay so let's just apply tracking data by parenting and that should be it yeah looks looks okay uh, but of course we need to set the blending mode and we need to set it to screen or to add let's see how add looks well that's a definitely a little bit too hot so let's leave it at screen but it's still not exactly uh, what we want right so um, let's just try maybe some tint 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 is by default tinting to white on uh, black and white and I think that's okay because we can decrease it to maybe 70 maybe a little bit less and that actually looks better already and here's the thing here's the big difference between the muzzle black glow effect and something that I'm going to show you because I already have a preset I've already seen it in here muzzle 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 environment and this is something really cool uh, right now it looks uh, a bit awkward but what we need to do is we need to set it up to a screen mode or to add mode let's just see how add works oh yeah add works better in this case and what this does it basically behaves uh, similar because we also have the circle effect right which just uh, creates a circle but it's not as obvious as with the muzzle plug what you can do here is that it, it, it actually creates a, um, a mask uh, of the light areas of the footage and lights them up as the muzzle flashes are being fired, uh, as the bullets are being fired. And you can change the region which it affects with this linear wipe. And you can also overexpose it, underexpose it so do uh, you know it looks much better than just a circle right you can see that all those pixels in here are being modified and it's it's not looking like a circle so I guess that's good and uh, uh, you can just leave it as it is so it doesn't move with the gun uh, or you can also apply uh, the tracking data to the circle center and it will follow the gun as well so this is it but let's now focus on uh, on actually firing the muzzles, uh, fi firing the bullets, so we need the muzzle to disappear and reappear. And we also have a preset for that, it's called the Muzzle Controller, and it's a simple uh, simple trigger triggering expression based on some probability stuff and, you know, just some settings to make it work uh, nice, so we just need to apply it to our muzzle flash. And this is the preset, density and seed, seed you already know from the muzzle plug and from other particle generators like uh, trap codes particular for example and we also have this density density in uh, in the simplest terms is um, 
on how many frames the muzzle flash can appear. When you've got it set to one, it means it will appear on every single frame, every each, every single frame. Um, well, it's one of the settings because we also have this trigger, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So this is how it looks right now at the moment. The muzzle flash is going to be visible on all the frames, like so. I hope you can see this. This is a screen recording and you probably get this video a little bit jiggly, but still, it's on every single frame. If I set it to, uh, the density to 2, we're going to get the muzzle flash on every other frame. Right? This is the maximum. This is the maximum amount of muzzle flashes in this shot. Every second frame. If I set it to 3, it's every third frame. And so on and so forth. Right? Very cool. And now this is where the trigger comes in. The trigger basically is like what, what the chances are for the muzzle flash to appear. And right now uh, sorry, what the chances are for a muzzle flash to be invisible. And right now the chances are 0 to 20, right? Uh, the reason I did two points to create the triggering algorithm is it's, it's easier just, it's just easier to imagine how often it would be because I can set it to 50 for example, right? And then I set it to maybe 7 and a, seven and a half or 7.8, right? So, uh, it's just easier for me, at least for me. So let's leave it at 20. I find that 20 works good. And let's set it to 15, for example. And in case that the muzzle flash would appear on every, uh, on, on, on each frame, we just set it to the density to 2. So it's never appearing uh, on the next frame. God, I'm rumbling. Um, okay, so I hope that is clear, and let's just see how that looks. Well, okay, that's that's not bad. I hope you can see it. But right now, we need to turn on our uh, environment map as well and we can also uh, affect the environment only when the muzzle flash is being fired and we can do it very very easily just simply by taking the opacity value and using a simple pick whip to create an expression and we have to link its opacity to the, the opacity of the muzzle flash and that's basically it here we have the muzzle flash here we don't and the environment is being unchanged so that's pretty awesome I guess uh, let's just render it out and see how it works well I think that's not too bad not too bad at all and uh, in fact you can use this uh, environment preset which I'm going to provide in the project file as well uh, you can use this instead of the muzzle flags glow uh, to create this kind of effect. I think that would work pretty nicely. Uh, but what is a muzzle flash and a gunfire without having the sound of gun being fired? So let's just take some sound file. I don't think you're going to hear it. Um, let me just look for it, okay? Give me a second here. Um, I know I have it somewhere. This is something that I've downloaded like uh, ages ago. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, sorry guys, this is obviously a live tutorial as well. Um, okay, so let's just take this file. Even though you're not going to hear it, you're going to see uh, what I'm doing and how it's, how it's working. So let's just take a look at the WAV file. We can definitely see where the bullets are being fired here, 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 and here. So uh, let's just go to keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. Easy as that, right? Um, and let's just take a look at the what was created. We can get rid of the left and right, just leave the both channels in, and let's take a look at the graph editor. 
Um, well, you've got 30 units in here and about 15 in here, closer to 18. Um, okay, so let's let's agree that the range between 20 and 30 is is what uh, what interests us, right? So anything above 20 is a shot being fired, and everything below is no shot, no bullets. So we can create a simple expression to actually change the values of the slider. And we can do that by typing linear value. So that means take the value of the slider. And we're interested in the range of what? Like what I said, like what? 20 to 30 or maybe 25 or something. Uh, and we want to change it to 0 and 1. And we also like to have this in math round. So math round like this. And this will take generally take the values because if we have this range between 20 to uh, 25 and the output range is going to be between 0 and 1, we are going to get some fractions anyway. So math round is basically going to uh, round those fractions and give us 1 if the result is for example 0 0.8 and give us 0 if the result is for example 0 0.4, right? If that makes sense. Um, okay, let's see if the expression works. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, looks great. Um, so, let's just go back to our muzzle flash, uh, to our muzzle flash expression, and it's in the opacity section. Let's turn off the uh, graph for now. And you don't have to worry about this expression, this is something that is provided to you, so no sweat. Um, let's create a new variable for this, if you want to drive the opacity from, of the muzzle flash from the audio, right? So let's make this SND uh, trigger. <coughs> Sorry, uh, this stands for sound trigger. And let's point the value to our slider. And this is going to be 0 and 1, right? Simple enough. And this little line in here is actually what, what decides whether or not the muzzle flash should be visible. And the way I'm thinking about it is it, that the muzzle flash is, uh, of course, it can be only visible when the bullets are fired but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be visible. So in other words, there are three conditions for the muzzle flash to be visible. First, the bullet must be fired. In other words, there has to be an audio present. Then we need to... Uh, then the value that says OK to fire needs to be true. And this value actually is, uh, is the frame on which we are OK to show the muzzle flash. Remember how we said the density uh, to every second frame, every third frame, this is this value. And then we've got the trigger. So if all values are true, then show the muzzle flash. So here we go. Let's just add this sound trigger to the equation. S and D trigger equals 1. And OK to fire. And the trigger then show the muzzle flash. Okay, let's see if it works. And we apparently have two little muzzle flashes. Let's just change the settings to see what it's going to change. Let's set the density to 1 so it can be visible on every single frame. And let's set the trigger to zero, so in other words the muzzle flash is visible in every possible situation on every frame and with the probability of 100, right? So in other words, it's going to be visible each time the audio trigger is set to true. So let's see how that looks. And we can compare it with the actual WAV file uh, display. So let's just check it out right now. Visible, 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 not visible. Visible, visible, not visible. Visible, not visible. Looks okay, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, we can see that it works. Uh, so let's just do a quick run preview again. And you might be wondering, what do we do with the environment uh, layer that it's lighting up the scene when we've got two muzzle flashes in the scene? For example, this guy is shooting, right? Uh, but this guy uh, doesn't shoot. But uh, what if he would, right? What if he would uh, has his own muzzle flash? Well, this is pretty simple. You just simply create a new muzzle flash. And for the equation of the opacity, uh, driven from the opacity of this muzzle flash, you simply have to add the value of the opacity of another muzzle flash. Because muzzle flash opacity goes from 0 to 100. It's two values, 0 or 100. So if you're going to add those two, you're going to get 200, right, at a maximum. But since the opacity only goes to 100, it's going to be okay. If that makes sense. I, d I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Sorry, that was a, a surprise. Um, okay, guys, so uh, I think that's it. And uh, I know I said I'll do some rotoscoping because I was planning to uh, mask this guy's back in here, but I'm too lazy to do that right now. And it's probably taking, this tutorial is probably taking too long anyway. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And check out the muzzle plug if you're doing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, action footage uh, stuff. This is something that you would definitely uh, like to um, take a look at. But I also recommend my uh, my presets maybe to tweak the muzzle plug just a little bit uh, because it doesn't have this uh, this uh, option to set the muzzle plug to be visible on every second frame on every third frame. And if you want someone to be firing very intensively, like you know, like a machine gun or something like that, you definitely want to have a lot of uh, muzzle flashes, but you don't want them to be on each and every frame. Uh, so you can just tweak the muzzle flag using my presets and using my muzzle environment preset as well. So once again, check it out. Visit FX Home website to get your own muzzle plug. And don't forget to check out Making It Look Great series, which I am honored to host the, the fifth edition, the fifth DVD. And of course, check out my site, check out my blog, check out the support link, which is the hotline that you can use to communicate with me live. And um, leave some comments. I really, I really enjoy reading the comments. I actually know that someone is watching my tutorials. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, See you next time. Happy after effecting.